OK, so now we're going to go into another elimination problem, where, again, we see that our coefficients for our two variables, are none of them are the same. And so what we're going to do is, again, have to multiply by a multiplier. Now, usually we multiply, you like to multiply by a multiplier. What we want to do is multiply by an integer and look at a coefficient that we want to determine. Now, I can choose to eliminate the x's or eliminate the y's. And the way that I usually like to determine them is I like to look at the LCM, the least common multiple of both of my coefficients, and determine what is going to be the easiest one for me to multiply by. Well, I notice that 5 and 2, those have a least common multiplier of or at least common multiple of 10. What that means, I'd have to multiply this top equation by 2 and the bottom equation by 5 to get my coefficients to both be 10. However, between negative 3 and 6, my least common multiple is 6, right? So all I would need to do is only multiply my top equation by a multiplier to have the least common multiple. Now, since this is negative and this is positive, I don't have to multiply my multiplier by a negative to make sure it's positive 6. I can, but it's OK if I have a positive and a negative coefficient. As long as they're the same value, what that means, again, is I just add my two equations. If they're the same coefficient with the same sign, we subtract the equations. But we don't have to multiply our multiplier to get them either both positive or one positive, one negative, or both negative. So all I'm going to do is I want to make this have a coefficient of um, 6. But it's OK if it's negative. So I'll multiply it by a multiplier of 2. Now, you got to make sure you're multiplying everything by this when you're creating equivalent equations. Not just the left side of the equal sign, everything. So I multiply and I apply distributive property. And what that's going to do is that's now going to create a brand new system. I'm sorry, not a brand new system, but a brand new equation that is equivalent to this equation. So therefore, I'll have 10x minus 6y equals negative 6. So by multiplying by 2 by everything, I get this equation, which is equivalent to do this equation. But what's so special about it is now when I write in my second equation, I have now coefficients that the absolute value are the same, but one's negative, one's positive. So now to eliminate my y variable, I just need to add the two equations. Well, 10x plus 2y is 12x, negative 6y plus 6y is going to be 0y, and negative 6 plus 0 is negative 6. Therefore, I have 12x equals negative 6, divide by 12, divide by 12, x equals a negative 1 half. So now we know that the value of x is negative 1 half. To find the value of, I'm sorry, why am I, yeah. To find the value of y, now I need to plug it into one of these equations. And you can plug it into any equation you want to. Our original equation here, our equation here, or even our one that when we multiply by multiple, because it's an uh, equivalent equation to our original. However, I'm just going to choose to plug it into this equation. So I have instead of 2x plus 6y equals 0, I'm going to say 2 times negative 1 half plus 6y equals 0. Well, 2 times negative 1 half is going to be a negative 1 plus 6y equals 0. Add the 1. So I have 6y equals 1. Divide by 6, divide by 6, y equals 1, 6. Therefore, the solution of, to my system of equation is going to be x equals negative 1 half and y equals 6. That means when x equals negative 1 half and y equals 6, both of these equations will be true. Therefore, on a graph, that is going to be their intersection point when what we call our solution. Thanks. Alyssa Kester, please call 1007. Ms. Kester, call 1007.